Welcome to the Kendi and Rabo podcast, sponsored by Anderson's Bar and Grill and the Blind Tiger Bar. And the time is 6.30 on a Monday evening. Wrapped all over the place. Man. Don't tell Luke that happened. What? That we had Brenda. more problems? Yeah, more problems with these fecking things. So we found out it was big, the dusty preamp on me. The dusty channel. Yeah, you want to see the dusty channel on Kendi making a fucking uh, hames of it. Um, so now I just have to switch into the mode of chatting to you, which is the hardest part of my week. Every week. <laughs> I've been noticing that lately. No, it's the hardest part of my week. I almost rang week. you earlier and said we might leave it this week. Why? Because I wasn't feeling it. Why, what, what were you not feeling? I'm, and I'm worried for this podcast and I, I'll d- d- disclaimer straight away. No, that's okay. Don't be disclaimer again. People, you hate when you go, just let everyone know this load of shite now. <laughs> and we haven't even fucking said that. Yeah. Yes. Why are you wearing a haircut t-shirt for? A what? A haircut t-shirt. It's not a haircut t-shirt. It's an awful yoke now. Uh, but you bought that so, in 1998. So, for anyone that's not on the Patreon, you absolute lunatics. You yeah, just, you stupid. Y- f- y- no, no, let's split them. <laughs> what a bunch of fucking idiots. Every one of you. This is, the uh, this, I was in Bursk. Right, okay. Abroad in Spain. Oh, yeah. And I seen this t You know the Bershka and um, and Pull and Bear and all them, do, they do the band t-shirt. Y- yeah. So this is a Metallica t-shirt from <laughs> that they had for sale. Tell me that's not from 1996. It's not from 1996. It's, it, has, it, it, it looks like it's been faded. It's from two months ago, and I've washed it once. But was it a different colour before you... No, no, this is the colour of it. That's an awful colour to make a t-shirt. Why would they make a t-shirt so faded? I, I love it. Well, well yeah. it's also three sizes too big for me, and I think that's great. No, I think you do. You look like a beefcake in it, man. Thank you. As we said the last day, you looked like you had all the beef and all the cake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, now, I, yeah. I was feeling good about this t-shirt until this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. But Laura came home from her lunch break. Mm-hmm. She came home on her lunch break, so she did. So she did. So she did. She came into the house, and Mr. Sean were there, our usual lunchtime conference. Right. We'd be sitting at the table talking having a meeting, about, having a meet and talking about the night before, talking about the week to come. Right, okay. And Laura landed in, and right. she said, oh yeah, I remember that t-shirt now. She said, there's uh, an older lady in work wearing one as well, just like it. <laughs> I think, um, like, I, same I, think, size. I think I saw a fella maybe, like, taking out the old bins down the dump in town, man, yeah. wearing the same thing it's as well as that, man. You know a t-shirt that you don't really give a shit about, like? <laughs> it's a band t-shirt, and it's got all of the track names of the Black Album from Metallica on the back, so it's particularly bad. Oh, it's an awful, um... It's an awful colour, And I mean, I'm one to talk now, like, you it's know? an awful colour. I mean, I'm wearing a fucking a Slager Overs jersey, yeah. and which actually brings me on to a point that I did want to talk to you about a little bit. I'm First ready. of all... First of all, actually, before we go, the two weeks is all we got. Of what? And it's pissing out of the heavens outside I, in the door. We got two weeks of a summer in Ireland. Fuck the summer. I blame the government. I don't want any more summer. I can't sleep at night. Yeah. I am losing, I said, three litres of water every night. But it's still warm, though, now. It's too bad. I yeah, can't it's too warm. It. But I blame the government, Ray. I'm taking sick leave tomorrow and Wednesday. What, because of the heat? It's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, I blame fucking Veracca. I, I guarantee you their constituencies, there's still sun. I bet you. They got four pay rises last year, Ray, now, and they didn't spend a drop of it on the sun in the west of Ireland. You think the TDs are getting the sun and wearing I bet you Dublin, Southwest, or wherever the fuck <laughs> Ragger is. Yeah. I yeah. bet you it's still sunny there. He wouldn't yeah. send any of the sun down, man. And all the money that's yeah, left over and everything. Yeah, no? I, I kind of had to run into Harry Norman today to buy a battery. And uh, I had to run through the rain, and I said, you know what, this country's not worth it no more. <laughs> I said, this country's not worth it, is you're it? This, you're and I'm on leaving. Instagram, and I'm watching everybody abroad. I can't go abroad because of the child. And I'm watching them all abroad enjoying themselves. Yeah. Right? Every single one of them. And yeah. they're in they're in Fungarola, Ray. They're yeah. in Tenerife. Fungarola, Ray, bless. So, some of them are in Kusadasi. Where's Kusadasi? Turkey. Is it? And they're not going over there getting the, the vehicle done or the hair done. out for the sun. They're going over there for the sun, Ray. And mm. they're all enjoying themselves. And I'm running into Harvey Norman in the piss and rain. If, if I could give you a, a ticket now to anywhere, where would you go? Oh. Stupid oh, question, this, because yeah. I know... No what do you mean? Why? You'd probably say some beach spot in Spain or Portugal. Yeah, yeah, but you're yeah, but why? What would you say? Well, oh, I'd love to go to Alaska and fucking feed the pigeons or the dolphins <laughs> or whatever the fuck is there. Well, I'd love to go to Alaska and see all the Alaska castles. Yeah, Alaska castles. Yeah, the, but that's what you say. You're such a prick. I, I, I'm a simple man, a man of simple pleasures. Ray. Spain. Yeah, but can I go on my own? Oh, yeah. Are you to the point now with the child that you don't want to be around the child anymore? No, I've said it before. When you're hungover, I do wish I didn't have her. That for sure. Yeah. But I do. The one thing I do miss is um, the the freedom to just go and do. Like if we decide now, this is the thing. So me and Nicola have been humming and hawing 
Right. Humming. We have been humming and then she'd start hawing then I'd say <laughs> I'd say that's fucking awful annoying Nicola when you're hawing like that. I was only humming. You're like hmm. But now yeah, I was kinda of going hmm and you were like, ah, oh, and I was fucking annoying Nick now. <laughs> Quit that really, hard, I was really annoyed that hard. Yeah. So when we were humming and hawing and humming and hawing, yeah. uh, we were saying will we go abroad or not like and then so we were like, let's make it really easy. Let's fly from Knock. Lovely. Let's, let's just go to mainland Spain. Yes. Or let's go to Faro into the Algarve in, yeah. in Portugal. Yeah. Right? But then you have to realise then I don't even think you can bring a child on a Ryanair flight, or if you do, you have to put them in the overhead luggage, I think. Because Why couldn't you bring Because a child? we'd have to fly Ryanair with Ali at nine months and probably have to sit beside some maybe ir- irreputable people who are going to give out shite about her. We know what Ryanair... But isn't she lovely? Like. She was already in Boston and she was Yeah, lying. but we know what Ryanair... That, that was that, that was Aer Lingus people, right? They're different. Oh, right. Aer Lingus people are different. Even like the stewardesses... On Aer Lingus, there's probably some right there, Stuart. There is one, actually. No, no, the one that listens to us is Aer Lingus, Brendan. Yeah, lovely. So, I mean, Ryan Air Stewardess, they don't give a shit about your baby. When we brought Ali on the Aer Lingus flight, they were like, fucking, don't you worry, we're going to sort all this out. If anything, we'll bring her into the cockpit and the pilot will mind her. She no. starts crying. I have... Whereas Ryan Air, Stop they're like, now. it's your own fault for bringing on a baby, no. you bitch. Yeah, the flight was 1999. This is what you guess. My name is Maura. I've only been a stewardess <laughs> for the last two years and I'm on 12 quid an hour. I don't give a shit about your baby. I think Shut that baby up before I put it in the overhead locker. I think you'll find it. I'm na- my name is Mara and I'm from Poland. <laughs> well, no, there's some Irish ones on it as is well. There? Right? Yeah, yeah, the Polish ones are all right way because you get what you get. Okay? Right. <laughs> but the Irish ones are all bitches of Irish ones that are right there uh, as stewardesses, you know? And you're so, really marginalising a big group of people Ah, but here sure, what's now? the point in talking about them if you're not marginalising them, like? Right. There's no point in me saying, ah, some of them are all right and some of them are, you know, whatever. No, they're all a bunch of bitches. Right. Everybody, they're all. I, but Aer Lingus, man, as well. And if you, so that's what I'm saying, if we fly from Knock, we're going to have to deal with the fact that, like, oh my God, a baby. You think you want to bring a baby on the flight? <laughs> you fucking idiot. Yeah, like, they won't. Just see, can she fit into this 10kg thing first and then we'll see if we can bring her on. All I can think of is that you're going down this negative narrative road mm. right mm. you're imagining all the things that could go wrong you're yeah. catastrophizing yeah yeah but in actual fact you'd arrive at knock and they'd probably throw a party they were well, like knock it'd be grand. getting this far knock it'd be grand and because... then Mara from ryanair would probably come out and push the buggy onto the plane for you no that's the other thing as well you see when we went to boston we had all that stuff over there ready we'd have to bring a car seat mm. we'd have to bring a buggy we'd have to explain to a portuguese man that uh we have to strap this baby into your taxi i have questions yeah why in the name of god did it go from there was a time you could put a child in the back seat no, I can't do that in the mirror. You can't do that in the mirror. I'll tell you one thing now, not to call out <laughs> my own father. <laughs> but we had a bitch beastly charisma yeah. our whole career. What a great As car. Ch- and there was uh, it was a five seater car. Yeah. So there was six of us in the family. We drove everywhere, everywhere. In I the five seater. I was the one who didn't get the seatbelt because I was the one that we, they could do or do without like. But five seaters used to be six seaters. What do you mean? A car used to yeah. take six people. Yeah, yeah, but not allowed Because you had four kids in the back. Yeah, yeah, but three seatbelts. Yeah. 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 Eamon. Yeah, it was Eamon Ryan again. <laughs> Eamon Ryan. Eamon Ryan again brought in the seatbelt. Like, for we had an Opel Cadet, and yeah. there was at least six of us in that. There was times, Ray, and fuck me, I probably should. Who cares? There was times, Ray, we'd be going to a match in Four Roads. Yeah. Right? Or Kilbride. And there'd be someone in the boot. A hundred percent. Would there? Some, yes, there would. There'd and that's some, just because there was no room in the back seat. Yeah, for there was. There was already four or five kids in the back seat, so they had to put another one into the boot. Then he'd be there beside the balls <laughs> and the gear bags and the cords and what's, everything. What's worse though, as well, is tractors. Yeah, tractors. You'd bring children places. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You for know, sure. and you'd put three or four tractors. Uh, not, <laughs> you'd put three or four children in the in what's called a transport box. transport box, and away yeah. they go. Yeah, away they go, and they just hold on. Ah, but it's Eamon Ryan again, you see. Because Eamon Ryan doesn't want you even driving your tractor, Ray. I remember a time once in my life ever, I've said it before, I went to the bog with Luke Mean Flanagan and the only reason I did it is so I could go on the back of the turf on the way back out to Longford East, out That's the far side of Cassery, yeah. right? Yeah. Eamon Ryan won't let you do that no more now. He won't let you foot the turf, he won't let you burn the turf and he won't let you on the back of the tractor. Right. right. All he let you do was go down to Gary Cycles, man, and spend four grand on a bike and then fuck it. Everyone <laughs> clap. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God, we're doing our bit for the environment, Eamon. Oh my God. Shout out to Gary Cycles, by the way. Some Shout out to Gary Cycles as well, which is a fine they've, establishment. They've done nothing wrong in this They've game. done nothing wrong at they're all. I mean, they're only piggybacking, and thank God they're piggybacking because there's no diesel when you piggyback, right? <laughs> they're only piggybacking on the back of Eamon Ryan and his big green agenda. Do you think Eamon Ryan, like, surely they're putting some of his agendas on the fridge? You think when he walks into a meeting with Mihal Martin, right, and Leo Varadkar, and he says, I have another great idea, okay? I think we actually should piggyback each other to work, okay? <laughs> and so when you're walking your kids to school, put them up, and they just say, Eamon, that's such a great idea. We're going to put it right up, write it down. Yeah. Draw a little picture of it, Eamon, okay? Yeah. Draw a lovely little picture. Here's the colouring book. Yeah. Stick your tongue out. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and then we're going to slap it right up on the fridge here in the doll. You no know, bother at all. You I'm know, I can't, I can't completely comment I can, on. right? Okay. I know you can, but it makes me <laughs> deeply uncomfortable when you're criticising my colleagues. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. I know you can't, but the good news is I can, right? And I know, the, but for, in Eamon Ryan's defence, we yeah. are killing the planet slowly. Eamon, no, no, it's not. A, okay, that's okay. In Eamon Ryan's defence, we're killing the planet slowly, no, right? Yeah. Does it change the fact that you have fucking, I've got to make fun of you, okay? <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> So you're, you're allowed. Oh, are you okay there, Mark? First of all, Abe and Ryan, mm. we might all be killing the fucking planet slowly, but we're only doing what we've been told to do for the last number of years. And you coming in now with these hard nail fucking ways about us mm. to change the world in a year is a load of bullshit. Do you know what you Kendi, like? your tax is going to be through the roof. I'm going to charge you for your diesel, you prick. How dare you? Well, I fucking I didn't know I could not buy a diesel car. No, you better buy an electric one or buy a bike. Okay, the bikes down the Gary Cycles are five grand and electric cars are 65 grand. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do, Eamon Ryan? Yeah. Okay, I can't just cycle down to the doll like you do every day. I can't cycle to fucking Clarity for a gig with a bass amp on me back. <laughs> Eamon's Ryan. Okay? So stop charging me a fortune okay. for me diesel. Okay, I feel I want to de-escalate the situation. No, I'm not going to de-escalate, right? Please, de No, no, I'm fucking going to go to... No. Go, no, no, Ryan no, never mind the gung ho. Let's get Eamon Ryan on the fucking podcast. I'll tell him all about it. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to introduce you to Eamon Ryan. Eamon Ryan, how are you going? <laughs> how did you get here? I want to know how you got here, Eamon Ryan. How did you get around the place, right? Why don't you fly off to your G20 somewhere or whatever the hell it is on your private jets, yeah. causing more trouble than Kendi ever did in an Astra? <sighs> Right? I just think with someone like him, I mean, it's such a green agenda. Like, no one's ever going to vote the Greens in in a majority. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We're yeah. never going to go, we're actually Green Party country now. Could be Let's go for it. Could be Sinn Féin. Woo! You said that. Mm -hmm. You said that. They could be your bosses, Ray, in a couple of months. Dag it. They could be your bosses again in a couple of months, Ray. They could be. And do you know what they're going to be doing whenever they're the, your playing bosses? Playing that clip back to me. They're going to play that clip back to you. <laughs> and also, you're going to buy a lovely house with your lovely Mrs. Laura, right? Yeah, they're and going to take it old, off me. Yeah, no, they're not. Burn big it old, down. Yeah, big old brilliant left lean and Sinn Féin are going to knock on your door. And they're going to say, hello, Ray, knock on the door, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and they're going to say, how, ma how, ma how much, um, how many people are living in the house? You're going to say two. No, two. And they're going to say, is it a four-bedroom house? Yeah. Yeah, and they're going to say, well, there's not two of you anymore. <laughs> not two of you anymore now. Say we, hello to we have three Abdul families. And Mikhail. We have three families, Ray. <laughs> Completely undocumented. They now live here as well, okay? Yes. Come, uh, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to Sinn Féin's Ireland, Ray. I'm yeah. going to get in fair trouble for saying that as well. Here's the thing. Me and Brendan were talking about this because we're very politically um, driven, me and me and Brendan. Yeah. We've been saying you might as well let, let Sinn Féin in for the crack and see what happens. See what happens. Because Lord above knows the your bosses don't do. They fuck. are marvellous. I mean, they are marvellous. They yeah. are marvellous. All hail. Yeah, Kim Jong. Bring, bring, bring Bertie back. <laughs> <laughs> because Jesus Christ, the Irish people are fed up. Do you think so? Oh man, they're fed up. You said it yourself. You were giving out. <laughs> I oh, said the, nothing. Oh, the people of Balda. Oh, they were giving out about it. They booed him when he went up. And, oh, how dare yeah, they boo. I didn't like that. You just want everyone to stick to the status quo. I and just want all, people to be kind. All hail our, our great leaders, which is Varadkar and Holly Warching. Okay. Yeah. Now, I haven't said that. As bad as it is in Ireland, Ray, and this is something I did want to get onto with you, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's a good little segue into it. I'm delighted. I okay. take any segue at the moment. Lovely. Away from problems. this. Okay. So... Speaking of um, the runnings of certain states, yes, are you familiar with the um, public investment fund of Saudi Arabia? The pub? No. What do you know about it? Uh, what do you know about Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia, a nice country, uh, <laughs> the good weather. Uh, are, is that where Dubai is? Is it? No. So Dubai is a the United, United Arab, Arab Emirates. Emirates. So Saudi. Arabia, so what, what do you know about United Arab Emirates? By the way, uh, what that, do you know about that, that region? That loads of money. Loads of why? Uh, why? Because they found oil back about 50, 50 years ago and they the, sold to the merchants. I think they found oil in 1938 was the first time they drilled yeah. and said, what they, is this lovely black river? <laughs> they did, yeah. That is burning so my what, skin. What is the problem now? So the problem, yeah. in my eyes, yeah. is that they've ruined, I wish I was you. Me. Sorry, no, let me start this. Let me start this whole segment. That's the first. I wish, I've never in my life wished I was Ray McAndrew. Really? Until now. That's really nice. And do you want to know why? Because the missus, isn't it? <laughs> you think it's definitely. Ah, it must be the missus. It must be the missus. It's because you have no interest 
in any sport at all. Not really, no. Okay. But so. I had inquiries about this golf thing that happened. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. So good. You want okay, so we'll So we'll, here's we'll, my understanding of it. Okay, brilliant. Right. Yeah. There once was a golfing tournament. <laughs> right. Set the scene, everyone close your eyes. Yeah, little, so little once upon a time story. there was a golfing tournament. I think it might have been called the PGA. There was. The PGA it, Tour. PGA Tour. Yeah. Right? Everybody was anyone that was anybody wanted to be on the PGA Tour. It was yes. the Premier League of Golf. It was. Right. Yeah. And then the Saudi Arabians yeah. right, decided, nah, we don't have anything to do with this fancy people. We want to set up a Rome one. Yeah, well, right. that's not what they said. Okay, but I'll so, see. Okay. Yeah, so they, so the Saudi Arabians or someone over there in the Middle East said, we're going to set up a, a tour called the Live Tour. It was the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia yeah. set up the and Live Tour. Very strangely then, they offered copious pounds, amounts of money to people that were on the PGA Tour. Yes. Said, Come and join our conglomerate. Yeah, and we'll pay and, you way more. And a number of, um, I suppose, financially savvy golfers went, well, to hell with this. They're yeah. paying me loads of money. Yeah. And sure, what about it? Yeah. And Rory's McIlroy yeah. got queer tick. He did. Right? He was like the Wedding Band Association. He went, hold on a feckin' second. <laughs> He's like, no way. Is this happening? On my watch. On my watch. I can't yeah. believe it. My I'm instinct. so I'm so disgusted with all these other golfers going to play yeah, for this. With all these other yeah. boys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All these other B-boys going yeah. around the place. <laughs> exactly. So that's what um, that's what happened. And Rory's McIlroy was quite take until about a week ago. Yeah. When all of a sudden, they, I don't know, they must have got together for a coffee or something. They said, let's just get back together. Mm-hmm. So they've got back together now. Okay. But I don't know how that might have happened. Okay, so... Because I'm- the PGA Tour hardly have the money to, to buy out the live crowd. Yeah, you think that's what happened? Must have been the other way around. Yes, I think it was probably the other way around. So you're telling me the, so, the Saudis um, they bought out the PGA? Yeah, boys. so and and the DP World Tour as well, which is actually a I think a United Arab Emirates tour, which used to be called the European Tour. Not the first thing that comes to mind when you so, said the DP World Tour, the, but okay. <laughs> You actually Googled DP World Tour, Ray. Ah, look at the stuff that came up. Mother of God, this woman yeah. was everywhere. Was she everywhere. was everywhere. She was everywhere. She was in Turkey. <laughs> huh? She was in Alaska. Yeah. Jesus Christ, she was walking. She went everywhere. So let me explain it all to you. Okay, so they, saw, they find oil in the Middle East in 1938. That's where we there. start. So that's where Would we start. Would you not go back a bit further? Uh, let's go back a bit further as well. So there was once a man, <laughs> Jewish gentleman. His name was Jesus Christ. Right. Okay. I, I wanted to go back to the dinosaurs. Now he was, they died yeah. and they created oil. No, yeah. no, what happened was there was a, a fellow called Jesus Christ and he was pinned up on an old Irish woman's wall. Right. Uh, for us all to look at. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Above with his father. Yeah. And his father was there with a red light underneath them. Okay. These people in the Middle East says, I don't believe any of that. So I believe in a different thing. Anyway, that's fucking beyond the point. And I'll get in trouble then if I start talking about yeah, that. Okay, so that. let's start talking about what happened. So, uh, all very oil rich area of the world. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, first of all, let's talk about the actual wealth that's involved there. Okay. Right. So, if you take the United Arab Emirates, okay. And um, the government fund that has funded Manchester City for the past 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. Quite successfully, it seems. Yeah, which was just something like we had never seen. Wealth we had never seen before. They have invested 2.5 billion in Manchester City uh, from a fund of 28 billion. Right. That's the United Arab Emirates. Then the Saudis said, geez, what a great way of washing or tarnished human rights. Because that's what it's all about here now. Okay. Okay. So the human rights issues that are involved in some of these areas are chronic. Yeah. Okay. So last year, Saudi Arabia uh, executed 198 people. They did. Now, they'd be a country that still believe in the death penalty. Yeah, but for what kind of and, things? So, and honestly, truth be told, like what country in modern day world yeah. would execute someone for a crime? It's crazy. crazy, isn't it? Yeah, mental. America, I mean, you wouldn't America get America wouldn't doing do that. So the Saudis, right? Saudis are doing it for much less. They're doing it for uh, drug-related stuff. Their stoning is still allowed. Lovely. You can still stone Cheap. people, bury them up to their heads and Cheap. stone them you out of it. stones. Yeah, and they, we all know that they love a bargain now out there. So, um, <laughs> so, so that's what they're, that's the kind of crack that they're at. So have you ever heard of the term sport washing? No. So sport washing, Ray, is where you try to um, invest in something that is very popular, like yeah. sports, yeah. in order to cover up or to um, change your tarnished reputation in human rights activities. Okay. Okay. And uh, when you look at Qatar, Qatar is a great... Uh, yeah, they, they did the World Cup. They did the World Everybody Cup. Everybody loves oh Qatar my, now. Oh, brilliant. What a brilliant World Cup. And yeah. don't worry about the 5,000 people that died trying to build the stadiums. Yeah, and all anything. the people that came from India and had their passports taken off them. Yeah, don't promised worry jobs. Them. Don't worry about them. A what a brilliant time. World Cup. Look at the lights. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Guitarist part okay. of this as well. So the guitarists now are trying to buy Man United as well. Seen All that. of these guys are getting into it. So Man City get boss. Okay, the Saudis say uh, we want to get involved in this. We're, we're going to sport wash as well mm-hmm. because we have just murdered Jamal Khashoggi in the Turkish embassy. Didn't okay. like that now. Yeah, so they did that. 
Yeah. And that went straight to the very top of the gentleman called Mohammed bin Salman. Yeah, now okay. be careful now. No, I won't. No. Please. <laughs> you think he's going to come because down on us? you mentioned a minute ago there that they're really interested in buying popular things. They'll buy our podcast next, is yeah, it? Yeah, I'm just oh, thinking, yeah. do you know... You, like, think they, you think if they had a choice between us and the two Johnnies? Well, I think they'd look at us as a cheaper option. Okay, so where was I now again? Okay, so the sport washing thing, right? Mm-hmm. So then the Saudis then say, we're going to turn us or, t- or we're going to... Wash our terrible uh, reputation. Yeah, make us look with better. With Newcastle United. Oh, a terrible now, choice. I told you that the United... <laughs> no, not a terrible choice, because they got them from relegation last year. Yeah. In the relegation zone to now in the Champions League this year. Oh, wow. One year. So, what happens there? 28 billion for Man City is is the, the fund, the public fund of the UAE. This is government funding, by the way. It's oil money. Yeah, it's oil money that they, is technically cover. It's government money. Yeah. The Saudi Arabians have their their public fund is six hundred and fifty billion. Jesus, a fair bit of money. And that is the crowd that just bought Newcastle United. That is the crowd that set up Live Golf. Right. And that is the crowd that, after all of these arbitrations and um, have now bought the PGA. Have out. now just said in behind it all, the PGA have been fighting them in court. Yeah. To say, and the PGA, would you believe, met with the U.S. Senate last year. This is these bastards. This guy called Jim Monahan, I think his name is. Mm. They met with the Senate last year. Right in the US and said we need to do something about this the human rights issues that are going on in Saudi Arabia we cannot let these people be involved in the sports of golf mm. this live thing is a disgrace Yeah. and then last week they said actually it had nothing to do with that it's just that we wanted the money and now we are going to uh, let them buy us all out there it's we're now a part PGA Tour not live golf by the way there's nothing to do with this as mm. in technically live golf nothing to do with this PGA Tour the DP World Tour and the public fund of Saudi Arabia and now the guy who runs that public fund, the chairperson of the public fund, is now the chairperson of all of that golf committee. All right. of us. So I'm, they just bought golf. And Rory McIlroy had to come out like a defeated fuck after fighting for yeah. a year and just go, I guess money won. I yeah. guess money just wins and they can wash their reputation. So now everybody's going to play together again. So golf is now owned by... Yeah, now everyone's going to play. Sure, it's, what harm? It's owned by the Saudis. Yeah, but what harm? Well, okay, so what harm of the human rights issues? Or Never what mind harm the of... human rights issues. Okay, sorry, Ray said it here, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. Never mind the human rights issues. Never mind the people that are getting I mean, excuses. Yeah, never mind that for a minute. Never mind any of them. Yeah, because all you want is to sit here on Saturday and watch the golf. Yeah. And you want all the lads. Shane Lowry, Rory yeah. McIlroy. Yeah. And the other lads. Yeah. Uh, what's the Woods fella? Tiger. Uh, yeah, Tiger Woods. Yeah. Jimmy Woods is his real name. Tiger yeah. is his... Tiger. Yeah, yeah. So Tiger Woods... Jimmy Woods life. actually owns a daybreak. But you know, just, in, in, in but that, That's it, like. That's all you need. Yeah, you but, just need all the boys playing but, in a nice piece of grass. But I've said this to you before, Ray. You fucking prick. Okay? <laughs> I've said this to you before. This is why you want to be me. It's very hard to get involved in, like, a lot of these issues until they really affect you and your person. Okay. And like it's it's so hard for you because you have um you have no interest in any sport ever and you think they're all stupid. I am fucking I just love sport more than that in the world. But release. did you not think though that the PGA when it was there yeah. wasn't um run by some salubrious characters? Yeah, yeah, it always is. There's like all, all of these, these things big are. things are all they're all it's just what cla- what class of salubrious character do you want to run by? Yeah, yeah, but the yeah, the thing is now that there's a real worry that these state owned properties of the Middle East are now just going to take over all, all of everything. Yeah. And then we just have to accept that, well, these murderers are actually now in charge of all sports, by the way. Mark, could you, know? you tell us how you really feel about them? Because, I mean, if they haven't I'm, enough I'm to go nice. on now to shut us down. No, they can shut us down all they want. Fuck them, Ray. Right. Fuck everything about them. And here's the thing, like I said to you about Liverpool a while ago. Is Who that, owned the PGA, though? So the PGA Tour was... The Americans? I, I actually, yeah, the Ameri- it was American Tour. And yeah. you wouldn't be ever inclined to call them a similar thing? Yeah, the Americans are a shower of bastards. So would you go as far as to call them murderers? Uh, well, I don't know anything about the people they, who I think you're being a bit selective here No, now. hang on now. Well, then you tell me then, Ray, <laughs> you fucking prick. <laughs> you tell me who involved in the PGA Tour ever murdered someone. I don't know. So no, find no. that and okay. come back to me. I don't think it'll be readily available. So find out if the chairperson of the PGA, <laughs> PGA Tour, Tour ever, ever murdered someone. Right. Okay. In, I'm going to do a little research on this. Yeah, so. perfect. Yeah. Okay, and find yeah. out that. The other thing is, well, like, so they just bought uh, Newcastle and then they just bought four clubs in the Saudi League. Yeah. And, uh, but they don't have Wrexham yet. So in about, no, they will soon. <laughs> no, in, in about 10 or 15 years, they're going to own the Premier League. Everything. Because they've just bought golf. Yeah. So the idea is they're going to buy the Premier League. And this is... Actually, look what I'm wearing right now. At the Bayern Slager Rovers. If I, if I, if I, do you know what happened, actually? The guy who owns Hull City, mm. who was some... I don't know where he's from, but he just bought a, a majority stake in Shelburne. Ah. 
So Shelburne now is like the fucking Saudis of the Irish thing. But all I'd say to anyone out there who loves sports and, and feels the same way I do about all this crack. Do you know what I mean? I'd say go down in sports. Watch Tiger Rovers, watch Shelburne. Watch, Until they get bought watch out. Watch St. Pat's, watch Finn Harps. Yeah. Go down and watch all that. Or watch your local GA. You yeah. know, that has some serious problems as well. But just <laughs> murderers go, as well. Oh, there's big murderers <laughs> in the GA. <laughs> Huge murderers There's in the other place where Stoughton is you know, still allowed. I try to think, is there any other main points that I should be making about this? Because I, do you know why I'm doing this? Because I want it to be said now so that in five years we can go, well, look. You're really upset about this. Well, it's ruined everything I love about the world. Which right. Is, which is competitive sports. Hmm. Competitive sport is what I love about the world. And the one this is the one defence I will have of Liverpool, by the way. And Liverpool are useless. Who They're owns terrible. the Liverpool? So Liverpool are owned by a guy called John Henry and uh I can't remember the other guy, but it's um the same guys who own the Boston Red Sox. Okay. So Americans. Yeah, Americans, yeah. Are Americans doing the old um Sport washing? Uh, no, no, not that. I mean, do they do do they execute people? I mean, does John Henry execute someone? Not, not John sure. Henry. No, hang on. No, no, but you're not making the distinction. The people who own these clubs are the governments of these countries. Yes, Mohammed bin Salman is he, he is the yeah, Saudi Arabian no public funds. Proof to suggest that he murdered anybody. Okay, why Brendan <laughs> is Ray defending this? I don't even get this. Like, it's do you know what Ray is doing right now? He's doing the same thing that he does for the Irish government, where he says, "I wish everyone would just shut up and just let and them just walk all over us." Yeah. Just enjoy it. I just let them walk all over us, and everyone should keep their mouth shut. Yeah, that's you're doing the same well, it'd be, fucking thing. It'd be just nice. Now, uh, wouldn't it be nicer if we all just like did whatever we could do? You know, like just shut yeah. up and let everyone just rule us. Yeah, you know. Let me buy my house and then let that be it. Then I'll show up after yeah. that. Like um, the so, bastards, though, they got me in the house race. What do you mean? I didn't tell you that. Oh, you didn't get it the was, house. It was the Saudis that got us out of the house. You're joking. I'm deadly serious. So they're moved into Saigo already. We that's... were bidding on a house. And, 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 and Mohammed bin Salman and Mohammed... bought a four bed in Saigo. <laughs> he did, yeah. He's twenty eight billion. Everything. everything. Huh? Jesus Christ! <laughs> he bought it for the stones. Who yeah. did buy? Who outbid you for the house race? I don't know, but it could have been the Saudis. It but they, they, been... they seem to have an unending supply of cash money. Yeah. While I was running mm. on fumes. <laughs> You're well. They're running on fumes. Yeah. Oil. It's mad. It's yeah. mad how house buying works in this country. So you've tried to bid on one house. I've learned things this week. Yeah. Right. Go on. I've learned that first of all that um, when you bid in a house. Uh, you could be on your own bidding in the house. Yeah. And that's great because you put a price in and then they say, that'll, that, that'll, that'll, take, take me that'll now. take it. But then if you come in bidding against me mm-hmm. and say I was I bid like 295. Yeah. Right. You can come in and say, feck you, 300. Yeah. Right. I'd have to go 305. Yeah. And then say Brendan comes in on it and he goes 310. That prick. Is he yeah. buying as well? Yeah. And then it goes in sequence. I always thought that you could like, you know, that everybody else reacts to people's... Oh, so me and you would be would be getting a text message from the estate agents going, Brendan's after or, uh, another guy, the Saudi government, a.k.a. Brendan. What? Three, Brendan put what on us? He he put 310,000 on it. But it comes back... Where does he get that money from? <laughs> I wondered myself. Um... But but uh, podcast sponsorship. Jesus, <laughs> fair play to Anderson's I can't even. Ha- why does Brendan have this money? I can't buy a house, and all of a sudden you and Brendan are in a bidding war. So Brendan anyway puts a three ten on it. Then I what? go. He went further again. What? Sorry. <laughs> I go three fifteen. Where'd you get this money? Right. I don't know. I didn't have it. That was the problem. Oh, so you're allowed to spend money you don't have. As I well. know. It, I presumed I'd have it. I couldn't buy a Turkish delight. <laughs> you don't like. Turkish so you went three fifteen. Sorry, go on. I went to three fifteen, and then and then you came back into it, and you yeah. jumped to three twenty. Yeah, without any. And Brendan funding. says to hell with this. What's the Saudis he don't need that house. He blooked out. And but that's then, not fair because he'd have to drive in the price up. I know. And he had no interest in buying it. He had interest in buying it at I, a 310. Oh God, I hate Brendan so much. <laughs> so you're you're then at 320 then, right? Well, could I not say, okay, 311 then? No, because you Brendan, can't. Why? You, well, you can if you want. Brendan, you... you could If you had gone 311, I would have gone, ah, Jesus, this fella's running out of money. i go 312. Well. And then Brendan's still out. Do you know? Okay, my bid would have probably gone in, in around so, the uh, eleven grand it's mark. It's so but, sneaky though, yeah. because if you go up in a if you go up in a, a one a thousand, yeah. you're immediately telling the other bidders in the in the game with you that yeah. you're running out of steam. So who bought the house in the end? You or Brendan? I, it wasn't me or Brendan. It was you. I ended up with it. <laughs> yeah. Ray, I can't afford that. Why did you make me buy that? <laughs> oh no! Shit! Yeah. This, the, I won't have it, Ray. The worst thing is... I, I can't heard, afford that. Either. I heard you were out the day before the sale went through. You were abroad in Rory's Maitland getting your hair cut. What? Telling Rory that you had bought a house and then followed up with, wait a minute, I haven't bought it yet, but we're going to get it. Because you've a heap of money. I didn't say any of that, Ray. I wasn't anywhere... <laughs> You're, I, mean, I, mean, I did get my hair cut last week, but I'm almost certain I didn't say that to him. <laughs> anyway, the person, whoever he is or she out there, that bought the house in the end, they got it for 320 and that was that. 
So that was your first... And my first ever bidding war experience. Okay, now, I said you after that, get ready for that 29 more times. Uh, it seems like that's going to be the way it goes. So if a house goes up in Ireland nowadays, another, just a great thing about living in this country. <laughs> wow. I mean, Ryan. Wow. <laughs> Even Ryan, fair play to him again, man. He has two bikes parked out the bag. <laughs> so if a house goes up here for a ton 60, yeah. that you can bet your bottom dollar, in the words of um, uh, Annie from uh, down the shop. There. Morocco. She... <laughs> Yeah, it's going to go for 200. Yeah. I mean, it just is like. It because, seems to be going 10, because, 20% more. Because even though um, what we've been made aware of, we've loads of space in Ireland. We just don't have any houses for people, which means that the bidding wars are just crazy. Mm. Even down here now, even in Sligo now, you see a house for 160, you better have 220 in your pockets. Because yeah, you're or you'd not, be wasting your time. You're a waste There's of time. There's a lovely house after going up by Rod and Strand Hill. Right. And, and not that- a chance, Ray. <laughs> Ray, you know, like, they have checkpoints in Strand Hill now to check where you're know, from before you go out. But it's funny. You it's would go- not be allowed to buy a house in Strand Hill, it's no gone, way. It's gone up for 315 right? And you'd love to get it if it was 315 Is it a one-bed? Is it a fucking... <laughs> it's a small you, stone... It's a caravan. It's a small stone cottage and it's restored. Right, it's but, lovely. Yeah, it's restored to its former but, glory of just... It's yeah, a shed. Yeah, it's not a shed, but it's going to go, I'd say it'll go 373 years. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But so the thing is, Ray, gone. you would... You know, like, you have to go through an arbitration if you want to live out in Strand Hill or Ross's Point. What? They will not let you just buy out there. Why? You have to prove that you can... That your notion's enough. Yeah, you have to take pictures of your coffee and <laughs> they'll check your Instagram posts, like, to see to what... See. You yeah, know, but, have yeah. you a picture of a shells cup on your? Uh, else, yeah, Laura, Laura laugh, covered all door. that. Oh, so Laura's doing that in the last. She's while, there. She? she must that have known good. this is happening. Yeah, she must. You have. To I keep have none an of that shit. It. And then Ross's point. Then, if you want to buy a house in Ross's point in Sligo, you go before a committee. You, you have to. Uh, you have to go before a committee, and they have to make sure that you don't even have an Instagram. Right. <laughs> right. Because they're like, if you let anyone know that we're out here, we'll kill you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't want anyone knowing that we even we even exist out yeah, here at true, all. True, so that's yeah. different scene. If anyone wants to know the difference between Strand Hill and Ross's Point, two coastal towns in Sligo are like yeah. in Strand Hill you have to prove that you're just the happiest person in the whole world. So chill. Yeah. Oh my god, and everything's so nice and, and every, everything's everybody's welcome. Yeah. In Ross's Point, you have to say, if I live out here, I'm not going to tell anybody. There is ever. no beach. There is no beach out here. There is no. We built one cafe. It's only for the locals. You're <laughs> not allowed in. You're not allowed out here. And that's why. That's why I prefer. I love Ross's Point because they're exact. You get exactly what. They're that close-minded Irish that you always I love, love to see. You land the- out there, but they, they. But the great thing about the Ross's Point people is they go go to our beach and jump in our in our Atlantic Ocean. We want. But just don't talk don't to us. Don't tell anybody. Don't, about it. Uh, don't talk to us don't at all. Don't look at us. Yeah. <laughs> don't look at us or talk to us. Do not come into our pubs. Yeah. You can use that all you want. And as long as we can't smell you, we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> and for anyone that's not a from house, Sligo, yeah. this is very informative. It is. No because idea what we're talking people, about. People do have this perception of Sligo, and I know this is true, is that when you look at Sligo Town, uh, and not to be, I mean, Brendan's going to kill me now for saying Anderton. Why would you even let that perception out? Yeah, well, Brendan, you spent two, three twenty on a house and then backed out, right? So fuck you, okay? <laughs> so, Psycho like Town has a perception of probably maybe like a druggy kind of, you know, it would have had that back years ago in the eighties. It definitely did, definitely did. Whereas it I did. I don't remember that. No, I remember anymore. the only thing I remember was like was, was a garrison town. What's that? As in a it, prison it, town? As in, oh, it was like that's that's a British town. Okay, are you yeah. fucking no wonder you moved here. <laughs> no wonder. Everything was red brick and oh. it was it was it was like ah they used to be in the union and now they're not. It actually used to be quite a Protestant town. So there's yeah, like I mean there's quite a Protestant yeah. contingency here inside. They like, hide their toasters. Yeah, to put toasters <laughs> in, 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 in the comfort. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is once you get out to Strand Hill and Strand Hill's gone, has just been hypered in the last couple of years for um fake pretensions. I like I know a lot of people in Strand Hill, by the way, who aren't like this. Yes. And I'm about to join Strand Hill Golf Club as well. I haven't been a member of Ross Point. Anyway, um if, if they let me in like that know, sounds okay. like a, an unrealistic request it's very unrealistic because they're going to say so where do you own your house and I'd say well I'm actually renting in town and they'd say <laughs> they'd be like oh, oh. they'd be like that Lord. like me eating the fucking shellfish last day oh, oh my god good old good old yeah. anyway uh, that's the two areas of the coastal areas of, of uh, Sligo that we're talking about there which are just picturesque beyond belief yeah Beautiful, but uh, whether you're welcome out there or not is a different story. Brendan has something to say. He has to say, Oh, don't say that about Sligo Kendi, you prick. Mark, can you interview Ray as if you've been auditioned for Okay, so Ray, okay. I am on the board, the commission, the arbitrary for board Hill. for Strand Hill, and you are trying to, you have just put a bid in on a house. And it looks like You've it's going won- to be successful. It's going to be successful. I've won it. However, right. you're in front of the committee. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I see you come in dressed like this. Mm-hmm. It's a no-no straight away. 
<laughs> right, 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 okay. So I'm going to ask you, what are your... Um, What's my intentions? What's your... The village. <laughs> no interest in any of that, okay? Okay. Have you an iPhone 14? Uh, no. What I, iPhone have you? Uh, th- 13. Is, does it do portraits and um, photographs? It does. Okay, cool. Uh, how up to date are you with... Um, proper lighting and sun angles. Uh, uh, from what the photos I've taken for my better half this past number of months, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible photographer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken multiple photos in various different angles, and every one of them is shit. Looking at your, despite uh, the beauty through, of the through your camera roll. Yes. How many shells coffee cups are in your camera roll right now? None. That's a fucking I d- disgrace. I don't. I, mean. I don't feel it's necessary to take a picture of the coffee cup. Okay. Yeah. No, not so great. Start with us here now, if I'm being right, nice. Sorry what, about what that. What was man. your name again? R- Ray. Doesn't matter. Okay, you're not <laughs> off to a great start with us here. What's your second name? M- uh, McAndrew. Couldn't give a shit. <laughs> uh, you're not off to a great start here, Ray. Now, what else do I need to do? The other thing is, well, in, in terms of your um, attire for your feet. Yes. <laughs> sandals, now we're talking. Oh, well, yeah. I what? have a really cool pair. Talk to me about it. Uh, they're blue. <laughs> <laughs> they have two Velcro, double Velcro. So there's a lot of support in them. Um, they are mostly plastic. But uh, they're very comfortable, and they had a Nike sign on them at one point, but it fell off. Are you a fan of Quicksilver um, flip flops? Uh, the, the one with the where they put the little pieces of plastic through your big toe and your little, next big toe. I'm not because they don't stay in your feet I and mean, they hurt your. <laughs> they this hurt fella. <laughs> Sorry, no. Just give me a second. What was your name again? Yeah, Ray. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, there's, in, there's no way this is going to work out for yeah. you. So, so you don't think I get it? No, okay, well, I, well, I mean, we haven't fully decided yet. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. I've, fully, I've gone to you know, Voya once, which okay. is the place that does the seaweed baths. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you get there on a voucher? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> the gift, gift certificate. Someone give me a gift certificate. Someone give me a gift certificate. I believe they were from oh. Strandhill, the person that gave me the gift certificate. Okay. One last question. Yes. How are you, uh, are you planning on purchasing a dog? Uh, oh God, no. We're very much cat family. <laughs> cats in Strand Hill? Yeah. You think we're going to have cats in Strand Hill? <laughs> yeah. Do you know something? I was halfway there, but I am absolutely bullet with you. Yeah. And I don't mind telling you this. You're Bon Jovi with your You dirty, with sick, sadistic, smelly pig. <laughs> cats in Strand Hill, yeah, you what think? what about it? Sure, I'm sure you have my there's a two there, Labrador. You know? There's a two Labrador. A two Labrador minimum. Yeah, minimum. <laughs> In Strand Hill, two there's a two either golden retriever or yeah. Labrador minimum in Strand Hill. And just to make this probably uh, more uh, universal, I'd say there's plenty of towns around the country that are like this. Have you surfed? What? Have you surfed? I, I tried it once and it nearly killed me. Did you take a picture? No. There's not a fucking hope. In Why would I take a picture? That you're of me? going to do this? How would you be? I'm only saying this now. You don't have to go whole hog on this. How are you to? Because I could see a little bit of fucking. Can you grow your hair out long? No. Okay. That's this is definitely not going to work for it. <laughs> I'm doing well to grow my hair out short. Okay. <laughs> places. It's not going to work. Okay. Who's your missus? Uh, Laura Kiley. You're in. Right. You're in. Okay, we can do this. Okay? That, good. Because she, she, she went to primary school in Strand Hill. Yeah, and she makes up for all of all your of my flaws. misgivings. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you something yeah. real quick. None of this shit is working for me right okay. now. We're going to do a trial period. <laughs> you may have to sell the house in six months for okay. a knockdown price to another Strand Hill. Local. Okay. 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 Cool. Do you, want to learn, um, do you want to do the same thing with Ross's Point? Uh, all right. Okay, so you come to me and you ask me. <laughs> I'm a member of the Ross's Point um, Residence Thomas, Committee. Right. So I need you to come to me and ask me. I say, I, I'm thinking about purchasing a house here. Uh, can I? Hello, hello, Mr. Fitzpatrick. How are you? <laughs> uh, okay. And your lovely wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, who I'd who like are you? To, uh, my name is Ray McAndrew. Couldn't give a shout. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to live in Ross's Point. Right. Where, where's Ross's Point? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we wouldn't even point. get that far. No, I've never even heard of it. Okay. Ross's point, you say there's no <laughs> such place. place. Yeah. There is no such place as Ross's point. <laughs> so that in, Turn that's... around. Okay. So there you go. There's a little insight into Sligo for you. Sligo's out there. political. Political, yes. Yeah, it's socio-geographical ex- political um, expertise. Uh, yes. And and how it runs here. Yeah. It's the infrastructure of the socio-economical platform of Sligo, County Sligo. Silvio Berlusconi's dead. Don't know who that is. Did you not? Did he write um, um no. cinema paradiso? No. Oh, what was he then? He was. He was uh, a race car driver. I F1. think he was the prime minister or the president of Italy. All right, he's dead. Dead eighty six. Uh, he was running the country in eighty six. No, no, he was running the co- country in the seventies, but right. he had huge amounts of tax fraud. Oh, brilliant! So the lot- you, you're probably saying, "Why are you giving house bossing?" 
doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Leave him alone. <laughs> so they, they locked, they, they, they couldn't lock him up, but they gave him community service. They had to do unpaid community service, like picking up the bins and stuff. How much that did he do? Uh, three years. I doubt it. He did that for three years. I doubt he did um, drop a work. But then he Lord was par- pardoned after that then. Yeah, he, he was, <laughs> and he grossed irregularities with his accounts all okay, the time. Okay, yeah, it sounds something similar to an island yeah. that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he passed away. Yeah, I think I heard something about that before. Yeah, something I similar. Heard, I heard, heard something, something about, about yeah, 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 gross yeah. irregularities in accounts or maybe yeah. not even having an account. What did you say his name was? Sergio Sil- Busquets. Sil- Let's go on Francesco Tati. Fran- what is his yeah, name? Sir Vill- uh, right, okay. Tony Cascarino. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so he's did. He did. Yeah, okay, and why did you I don't know, I... I have. I felt. I felt. I needed to say it. So, to, but can I? T- so, his tax fraud. Yeah. How did? Where, where do you stand? Like, well, you know, he did what he did. Well, I think if you're going to lead a country, you need to be somewhat shifty on the tax front. I sometimes don't believe you're a real person. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is. <laughs> that's the truth, though. I have to say this, yeah. I sometimes find it hard to fathom that you're real. But I <laughs> think I think it's it. Just looking at, you know, you look at the UK as well. There's a number of the lads over in the UK and they're all shifty on the tax front. Well, Jaris Bonson. Jaris Bonson. Jaris Bonson just had to, didn't he have to step He'd down? He resigned. Yeah, because he was having parties in 10 Downing Street. Remember COVID-19? Yeah. The pandemic He was telling everybody stay at home. He was telling everyone stay at home, right? And then he told all his and friends he was to come over my place. He was getting out of it on alcoholic punch in 10 Downing Street, man, yes. and putting on Frank Sinatra albums. Yeah. Fly me to the mm. moon. He was doing all this do, shit, do, man. Do, His hair was blowing do, in the wind. Do, do, do. He's probably fucking chatting up yours in the kitchen. Where are you from, lovey? Oh, you <laughs> fucking bastards. <laughs> Fuck all these peasant bastards in the UK. We're fucking he's having resigned a party. now. Yeah, he was, he was resigned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, in the Conservative Party, you're getting quite the. Um, but that's what I'm saying. That it, seems, it seems anyone in, in public service seems to always have problems okay. with the tax side of things. Good point. So uh, Boris Johnson, like, would you feel sorry for him for having that party during COVID? Or, uh, no? I, why would you feel sorry for him? Just As in, like, like crack. You, no, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel sorry for him. I can't fathom you as a person right now. Okay. It's unbelievable. Some of the injustices you find in the world, in, in like people that you that belong to you. Yeah. You'd have quite a strong opinion of like what people around you were doing, we'd yeah, say. Yeah. And you would be fucking well able to tell them you're a prick. But right I now. don't have Boris's number. But, I'd ring him and I'd tell no, him. No, you wouldn't, because you think leave him alone. I don't know if I you're knew. You're like, would well, everyone just shut up and leave him alone? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's your thing. Jesus Christ of Almighty. Um, I find it hard to believe that we even are compatible. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I'm. I probably need to go to the hospital after this. Why? Because I'm. I'm sweating out of every orifice in my body. <laughs> it's so feckin' warm in this country right now. I don't even want to say how long we've been shagging recording for because it ruins all the ins and outs of everything. But maybe we should start wrapping this bastard up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, is there anything that you did want to get on? Uh, uh, please I'd... don't vex me anymore, Red. Because I won't have. A, I won't hear of us. <laughs> I had a few bits to talk. Yeah, about. but don't fucking. Please don't piss me off now. Okay. Um. I was at a wedding on on Friday. Oh yeah, wonderful wedding. Yes, you, I was also at that said wedding. You were working at said wedding. I forgot to say to everybody on the planet, right? Mm-hmm. I do ceremony music and reception music at weddings. Lovely. I had two of them last week, both of which were tremendous. Yes, yes, yeah. So the wedding anyway was on Friday was up in the Sligo Park Hotel. Oh yes, it was. It was a ceremony. It was a ceremony. All the whole lot happened in the hotel. Yes, I have to say the hotel's facilities are marvelous. My God, if I could tell about the Sligo Park, it would be yeah, yeah, to a point. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck, Ray? Why did you have to name it then? Why did we name it then? Because How many times have I... You said you wouldn't vex me. I'm, I'm about to come down on you, Ray. I'm going to rain on you with some vengeance right now. You promised me for this last couple of minutes you wouldn't I don't piss me mind, off. I don't mind naming it. Because, I mean, this is a, a current affairs podcast. You named the Saudis when you talked about them. You had no problem the calling Saudis, them. The Saudis, Ray, I don't live a minute and a half down the road from me. I just have a question about Sligo Park. Right? Please. When? When did the mineral... And another mineral cost eight sixty to purchase. Yeah. Do you know who you can blame on that? How what? Eamon Ryan. Is it the sugary tax drink? The sugary old tax drink on him. <laughs> sugary tax. Means that we're driving up into Temple Bar prices now. I couldn't believe it. Sligo's gone into Temple Bar prices. Do you remember when people used to laugh at twelve euro for two pints? Yeah. <laughs> oh, laugh away, man. It's more than twelve euro for two pints yeah. now. Yeah, it's crazy. It's but absolutely crazy. Blame Eamon Ryan. You think it was Eamon Ryan's fault? Yeah, and blame for Agra as well. He got four uh, raises in his in his wages. It last was a year. marvelous wedding, and we had a lovely time. We just couldn't get over the price of minerals. Well, do you know what's happening? Obviously, Ray, people have gone back into the the old crouching tiger, hidden nagging right. phase <laughs> that we used to have. We went to crouching tiger, hidden nagging when we were about eighteen, and we couldn't afford a drink when we were yeah. in college. Now we're doing it again in our thirties. What's happening? That's now how bad it's gone, lads. We can't even drink. It's the cooler box in a, in a, in the boot of the car. Yeah. So you go up to the car park and you get your. Two 
two bottles of Corona. You do. And you uncapped them there and you walk back into the hotel. Sounds like a man talking from some experience. I didn't do it. You did, you But there was, there was, it was being done. Yeah. And come here, is the price of you doing the ceremony gone up? Way up. <laughs> <laughs> I am still ferociously reasonably priced. Are you? Yes, I fucking am, you That's prick. very good. Don't tell anyone what I cost, though. Don't be a no, prick, don't call me. No. But it was ferociously reasonably priced. It was ferociously reasonably priced. For a six hour day. Put that in the business cards. Ferociously reasonably Mark priced, Kennedy. Mark Kennedy. <laughs> ferociously. <laughs> It was a marvellous day And congratulations to Jennifer and Hannah Who got married there Yes Jennifer and Hannah The two most beautiful brides That I ever did yeah. see and yeah. two of the most That beautiful. was your first Two ladies wedding Was it? It was the first Two ladies wedding Yeah And was it better Than the other type of wedding It was definitely better Than the other type of wedding as well. And I got to charge more You know there's more Vass on those weddings On the lesbian wedding Do you know that yeah. Because of Eamon Ryan Yeah It's 38% Vat on yeah. a lesbian wedding. I don't think it's right now, but that's what it is. <sighs> no, they're the most beautiful, and they're the most beautiful daughter in the whole world as well. She was tipping around for the whole ceremony. Gorgeous. Uh, so it was great to be a part of it. Thank you very yeah. much. So the reason, anyway, I had to talk about that wedding, besides the fact I just wanted to congratulate the two ladies, is there was a, a marvelous wedding band playing at it. Go on. And they were called by the name of Hi Fi. Hi Fi. Yeah. And now have uh, I heard of them before? <laughs> now I just have to give them a shout out. Now it wasn't anything to do with the fact that they kind of said uh, we never ever got a shout out. Oh. Do you know, you never ever shouted us out. We never ever shouted hi fi out. Never ever ever. And they kind of said you only ever focus on other uh, top number one premier wedding bands. Well, they and are in the top six hundred number one <laughs> premier wedding bands in the well, country. What, what's happened is now I have to say now they were marvelous on, on Friday night. I very yeah. much enjoyed them. They played all the hits. They did. And they have a PA system that is, is beyond. I mean, Christ above. He was doing the DJ at the end. It's Gavin, all watching audio. Gavin was doing the DJ, and I swear to God. He only had half it running, and I was pinned to the back wall. You were you had you pinned I, up against I the back wall. I couldn't move. It was that marvellous. Woo! It no, was the most banging disco I've been at in Sligo in a while. With half a PA? Yeah, half a PA. I'll tell you, you wouldn't see it down on Wild Roots. No. Or Glastonbury. <laughs> Come here, by the way. I can hear an old sound coming out of your microphone. Yeah, Is that correct? Just, I, I want to fuck this mic into the bin. <laughs> it's just so So annoying. if anyone out there has heard a little rustle in the bush there, uh, that would be <laughs> Mark's cheap, cheap leads and cheap... Cheap yeah, hands. cheap leads that were about 30 quid each <laughs> per yeah. lead, like. Yeah. Fucking well, hell. if you didn't fiddle with it as much now, it might Well, I'm trying to stop noise. it from making that noise. Right. I'm trying to pin it so that it doesn't. Sometimes you just leave it alone, like. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. It stopped. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try to make it not do what it did. Anyway, I think it's you touching the stand. You're it, actually probably electric. No, I think it might be a grounding issue, genuinely. Okay, we'd figure because that we're out. Because we're not electric. grounded. There's nothing grounded about us here at no. all in this podcast. You're no. definitely not grounded, Ray. You are the most delusional man I've ever met. This episode has drove that home. <laughs> Sorry about that. You have drove it home. I find it... I'm infuriated <laughs> by you. You are. I told you I wasn't feeling dude. well this evening. Yeah, but you fucking came in and made me not feel well either. <laughs> we haven't done anything. I'm trying to pour my heart out, and you're like, what are you on about? Just let everyone be as they are. Yeah, even if they are riding you up. Uh, you want me to bring over Mohammed bin Sh- Salman? I just see it. And say, just have the house. I'm going to bend over here. We're, as much. we're going to be better off for you not watching as much golf. Well, I'm. Yeah, I'm not going to watch any sport from now on. Except I know. For, except for Schlager Rovers. Cassery Celtic. Right. Say Judge J. But this is great because you're going to live more now. You're going to live the life Don't that I live. Don't say the word live around me. Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't you dare say live. But maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just a way of getting people. Maybe they're How playing do sports f- try and save humanity. Maybe that's what they're doing. I don't know whether it's called you optimistic or fucking deluded. Yeah. Honest to God. Yeah. You're just... That was episode 206. We've come to the, got to the bottom of the Saudis. They're trying to save humanity. Yeah, there we go. If yeah. ever we've learned that, the yeah. Saudis saving us all, <laughs> saving us from all from ourselves, from ourselves. There we go, lads. And Rory McIlroy. <laughs> uh, come here. Should we announce everyone? Listen oh, yeah. up. Pick up the ears. We have our first days of our next live show live in Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre, 8 p.m. on what date, Ray? 20th of July. The 20th of July, stick it into the diary. There you are. We now. are, waiting you hear this now, going to be putting the tickets on sale. Oh. Yes, you heard that right, ladies and Everybody's gentlemen. Everybody's hearing, what do you mean I have to pay for it? What? <laughs> <laughs> because we're up in the production costs of all of the crack uh, Brian McDermott the, of the Brian McDermott band and uh, well of Pixel Productions yeah. is coming in so we are putting the tickets on sale for a number of reasons number one we gotta pay Brian we gotta pay a lot of things yeah. a lot of cogs working in this Brendan's costing us a fortune flicking the keys off himself yep. number two is that we then at least get an idea when we sell those tickets as to who's gonna turn up to these shows or not that'd be nice which would be just wonderful if we could do that so keep an eye out on the Kendi Rainbow social media for what date Ray? the 20th of July the 20th of July July, which is the next live show live in which Anderson's tremendous event. The July twentieth. The July twentieth, actually, if you want to live say that show. Fair play to Brendan flicking the keys clean off himself. That was episode uh, number. Me. I've never come out of a podcast. Podcast two or six. I've never come out more raging at Ray. Sorry. 
But having said that, Ray... Will we continue? Do you want to leave it at that? If I come back here again and talk, in the, it's always in 207, Ray. Right. This is the Peugeot episode, by the way. Oh, what's that? 206. <laughs> <laughs> the future episode Can we call it that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ray, fair play to me Good Fair play to me Good luck Good luck That's very funny You're not actually raging me, are you? Yeah. The Kendi and Raybo podcast Sponsored by Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre And wonderful food items And the Blind Tiger's Marvellous Alcoholic Fruit Drinks <laughs>